I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Gaudray from the Hospital Saint Antoine uh, in Paris. Uh, some of, uh, of you know him already. He talked to us uh, last AGM in October. So Dr. Gaudray has to leave very, uh, very in point. So he, we have to stop in, in, in each way at uh, 12.30. Uh, he's going to celebrate his his birthday today, and so he has to go back to uh, his family. And <laughs> thank you, Dr. Kadere, for coming here, and just uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. So it's always a great pleasure to share with you uh, the new drug developments uh, to treat this uh, disease. So actually, uh, the program is huge. <laughs> Uh, it's both AL amyloidosis and myeloma, uh, focusing on the new drugs and the, the, the clinical trials, the ongoing ones. Actually, after I suggest that we start first with AL amyloidosis, since uh, Professor Melini just uh, um, made his, his talk. So I will move sorry, to, to AL amyloidosis first. Uh, and then come back to, um, yeah. Um, so, um, actually, these are really two different diseases, AL amyloidosis and uh, myeloma. Uh, they all both come from, you have abnormal uh, plasmocytes, that's for sure. But um, the number of abnormal malignant plasmocytes are low in AL amyloidosis, while there are much uh, in, in bigger number in uh, myeloma. And uh, while you have, as uh, Professor Melini already mentioned, <coughs> bone lesions, kidney failure in myeloma, you do not, it, well, it's, myeloma is a, is, a, is a medullary disease, right? While um, you understand that AL amyloidosis is a systemic disease, and you have heart involvement, uh, kidney involvement, uh, GI involvement, uh, ne neuropathy, so really different diseases. But actually, the treatment is, is uh, more or less the same. The major, how do we treat this disease? You, you, that was already mentioned. There are two targets. For many years, the only target was, was to get rid of the abnormal plasmocytes. And this is still the case, of course, because the, the light chain comes from these abnormal cells. But now, this is the brand new uh, development. Uh, it's the ability of monoclonal antibodies targeting these fibrils either as oligomer or full type fibrils that are destroying the organs. So this is really the major uh, breakthrough and we have three uh, monoclonal antibodies. So this talk will be split in two parts. First, how do we get rid of these abnormal plasmocytes? And second, how do we target uh, the fibrils. There's a lot of overlapping, you will see. Uh, Professor Melini already mentioned, but anyway, it's, go it's good to repeat. Um, so he mentioned this major study. It's a major study because for many years, the gold standard of AL amyloidosis treatment was, and it, it still is, the combination of a chemotherapy, melphalan, plus high-dose steroids. He mentioned that steroids are very efficient to get rid of these plasmos, abnormal plasmocytes, so the so-called MDEX, melphalan plus dexamethasone. And obviously, you know that we have new drugs uh, for myeloma, for, uh, but this is also true for ALA amyloidosis because we are targeting the same abnormal plasmocytes, and we have uh, new proteasome inhibitors, such as the first in, in class was bortezomib, Velcade, and it was also mentioned, the oral one, Ixazomib. 
So what was done was to combine, to add and to index bortezomib. And that was a major phase three randomized international uh, study comparing MDEX plus or minus uh, bortezomib. And uh, the, so this is the schema of the trial, but the results have already been shown. The overall, uh, the, the adverse events were, uh, let's say, uh, acceptable, a little bit more cytopenia, maybe thrombocytopenia, because Velcade does induce uh, thrombocytopenia, um, and neuropathy, because as you know, Velcade does induce some kind of neuropathy. And, uh, but um, the response was, you see, highly superior in the MDEX uh, Velcade uh, arm. And that's the, uh, the, the details on the organ response and on the uh, hematological response. And these are the, that, that was already shown. You have a better time to second line therapy with the MDEX Velcade. And even though the overall survival was superior but not statistically superior, uh, if you look specifically to the subset of patients with the cardiac involvement, stage two, you do have an overall survival benefit adding Velcade to MDEX. And that's, that's also um, the, the hematological response and the cardiac response. So that's the conclusion and that's, that's what he said actually that in Pavia, now he, the, gold, the new gold standard is to treat uh, AL amyloidosis with MDEX plus Velcade. So this is important because we, we are moving from MDEX to MDEX Velcade. Now, another study that has recently been published by his same team um, um, tested the imids, you know that we have the proteasome inhibitors, but we have also the class the imids, and we have thalidomide, uh, lenalidomide, and pomalidomide, and uh, um, he, they published, Pavia study published, that for patients who have already um, been treated with uh, uh, the proteasome inhibitors, alkylating agents, lenalidomide, well, you could treat them successfully with pomalidomide. So pomalidomide and the, oh, oh, in combination with DEX was um, um, efficacious in this uh, setting. And that's, that's important. And that, that's what he mentioned also, that he's treating uh, quite often is AL amyloidosis patients with pomalidomide, not in first line, but in the relapse setting. So that's another treatment option um, in, uh, for, for, for these patients. So targeting the plasmocytes, the new developments, MDEX plus Velcade and POMDEX, pomalidomide DEX. Now switching to, no, well, to the monoclonal antibodies, the third, a third class, okay, the proteasome inhibitors, the imids, and now the monoclonal antibodies. And this, this was mentioned, but this is really a breakthrough. And I, I, I'm mentioning it's, it's a breakthrough even in, in AL amyloidosis, even, even more in AL amyloidosis because the, 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 the plasmocytes are limited. And therefore, if you kill this small number of plasmocytes, get rid of this small number of plasmocytes, you have a very a strong impact uh, on, uh, to, to, to in treating your patients. And this is true in ALA amyloidosis, and you will see it's obviously very true also uh, for myeloma. And uh, I'm just mentioning the, the way the monoclonal antibodies are acting, 
and this is the classical way. We will come back on that, but that was mentioned also. It's, I'm not sure if it does have a, a, ba a, ba a big impact in AL amyloidosis, but it does also have an immune effect, and it, it restores, it, it brings back the immune um, um, effect uh, to get rid of abnormal uh, plasmocytes. So, the first uh, cases were published uh, in October 2016 in blood, uh, testing uh, for the first time, and that's the Mayo Clinic in the US, in two cases um, of um, advanced uh, light chain um, amyloidosis, and you see that these patients was already um, uh, had received carfilzomib, cyclophosphamide, uh, dexamethasone, uh, he had been transplanted, so really very advanced uh, patient. And um, he relapsed, you can see the light chain, and he, he, is, he was then finally treated by daratumumab, and he could reach a very a deep response. So this is a very impressive response for such a patient. And that was shown again in another patient, and uh, you can see that actually it was almost undetectable. So very encouraging, very early um, uh, results. And that's now, that's what, um, that's a clinical trial that is ongoing in France uh, for patients who have AL amyloidosis and who do not reach at least VGPR, as it was defined earlier. Then we are testing daratumumab, and we will see how um, effective it is. So, for AL amyloidosis, not for myeloma. It's called amydara AL, um, well, it's AL amyloidosis, okay? So this is the first part, getting rid of the abnormal plasmocytes, MDEX plus bortezomib, pom pomalidomide DEX, and daratumumab. Now, how to get rid, and that, this is really new. This is the, 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 that's why we are so excited. Um, how do we get rid of the fibrils? And uh, we do have at least three different types of fibrils. Um, the first one is developed by Susan Lynch in the US. The second one by Pepys in London, Pepys team. And the third one worldwide, I would say. Uh, so I will not mention this one because it's, a, it, it's at a very early stage of development. I will first start with this one, the anti-ACP. And you will notice that ACP, if you remember, is the protein that links to the uh, fibrils, to the uh, amyloidous fibril. So this antibody is not only effective for AL amyloidosis, but is effective for all uh, amyloidosis. You remember the first slide of uh, Professor Melini, you have all, all ki different kinds of uh, uh, amyloidosis, but all these amyloidosis, they link to ACP. So if it is efficacious, it will work for all amyloidosis, while this one, and you will see, uh, the first preliminary results are outstanding, but it focuses only on AL amyloidosis, okay? So I will just remind you, that was published, yeah, two years ago uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, and that was the first uh, time that we uh, heard uh, from the Pepys team in London uh, about this uh, very uh, active antibody, the antibody against ACP. So they are, it's actually a two phases treatment. First, they give the antibody to get rid of the circulating ACP, and then they had another antibody, and that will re get rid of the fibrils, okay, and remove actually uh, the amyloidosis, and uh, so that's, that's what is described here, and it was especially efficacious for liver 
um, um, amyloidosis, and you could see before and after in, uh, with this, in these uh, two cases. Uh, and, uh, and, and that was, I'm just showing you the number of patients and the different uh, uh, organs and the different, the different amyloidoses that have been treated. So again, not only AL, but all kinds of amyloidoses. And so far, it's very efficacious for liver uh, amyloidoses. We have not heard too much since then, since this uh, publication, but I believe um, its, it's uh, trials are, uh, I guess, ongoing. Now we're moving to the NEOD, NEOD that was already mentioned, and I must say that um, that was um, first published also, you see, a, a year ago, um, and, um, and it was updated at the last ASH meeting, um, and uh, the, the results are absolutely, uh, so a small number of patients, of course, uh, but um, the results are, uh, Absolutely outstanding. You see the um, the cardiac, the cardiac uh, response. And I, I would like to stress again uh, that what uh, Professor Melini said: uh, cardiac is really the major problem. And uh, if there is a, I would like to say it again: a take-home message on AL amyloidosis. Professor Melini said it many times, but in my clinic, the patients that I see they do have cardiac involvement. And when, you, when there is cardiac involvement, it may improve with the monoclonal antibody and the treatments that I've just mentioned. It's very difficult to, to, to treat them successfully, very difficult. So the take-home message is really the early diagnosis. And you may have a, a major impact in advertising uh, because indeed it's a rare disease. You know. Uh, for, from from uh, Professor Melini, it's not so rare. It's like Hodgkin disease. But you know, a GP, he will see one or two myeloma patients in his whole life and never uh, uh, AL uh, amyloidosis. I mean, never, but he, he should see at least one. And that, that's the one that he should diagnose very early because that will make a difference. Otherwise, once you reach the stage of heart involvement, it becomes very difficult, really. However, and that wa that's why it was so outstanding, these results, you know, we, we could see that the anti-proBNP you know, that, that reflects the heart functioning, uh, such, such a decrease, you know, with this treatment, and quite um, quickly, you see, medium time to response is two months. So this is, this is quick, a quick, on a quick response. And um, so um, uh, biologically, at least, the anti-BNP decreased. I remember that this, we discussed that uh, with uh, Protena. Uh, in terms of heart function, because this is really what we want, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure, but we can ask uh, um, our colleague from, from the company. Um, so outstanding result for heart, outstanding result for kidney, you remember, kidney is very easy, proteinuria, you see, you remember, proteinuria, 50 cents <laughs> to, to monitor. Uh, you see the decrease of proteinuria, uh, so, um, and, and also that was outstanding, and I think if I remember correctly, that was you correct me if I'm wrong, the first time we, that we could show a response on, on, the, on the, the neuropathy, uh, if I'm correct. So do you see, the neuropathy was also uh, uh, much uh, improved uh, with this uh, treatment. Um, and that was not related to the previous uh, treatment, so really all the signals were showing that indeed it was the monoclonal antibody, the so-called NEOD, that was active uh, um, in, in this setting. And therefore, two studies were um, uh, launched, and that was um, um, already uh, mentioned. 
the so-called vital, and you understand why it, it is vital. It's, it was uh, for, uh, specifically for patients with heart involvement. And, and the other one, the pronto, was for patients who did not reach the VGPR, the so-called VGPR uh, stage. Uh, that is the, the, the first, the initial goal that we want uh, to treat um, AL amyloidosis. So actually, uh, I, don't remember, I don't know how many patients have been enrolled, but uh, I understand that it's been very successful because the enrollment is closed. <laughs> and then, of course, the, the trial is still ongoing, and uh, we are uh, eagerly uh, waiting for the, uh, the results. How many patients did you include in, in both uh, studies? In, in less than a year, no, something like that. Yeah, yeah so so very successful trial. The biggest trial in amyloidosis ever. Yeah, so so we we are really um, uh, looking forward to the to the results. So uh, so that that yeah, that's the schema of the of the vital study, and and uh, so you see standard of care. Uh, or plus or, or, or placebo or NeoD, and uh, and the pronto study um, uh, that this this is for patients with more the, at least one line of therapy not reaching a VGPR, and uh, and uh, again it's uh, NeoD um, or uh, placebo. So we will see uh, the results. Um, that was mentioned by Professor Melini, and this is the way it goes in myeloma, and uh, I suspect, but uh, Professor Melini will tell, but he mentioned that, and that we, you know, we are combining. We are combining the new, the, the new, the new uh, MM, you want MM, okay. This is my, almost my last slide. Uh, so we are combining, you know. Now the new standard is MDEX Velcade. Okay, but of course you want to add daratumumab, MDEX, Velcade, plus a monoclonal antibody. And actually, uh, there, there, is, um, there is such a study. I mean, it's not MDEX, um, Velcade, but it's Cybody, which is another gold standard to treat um, AL, AL amyloidosis. So we will uh, combine with or without uh, daratumumab. And uh, so that was my conclusion for the future treatment of AL amyloidosis. Um, I, I, of course, I don't have the expertise of Professor Malini, but uh, looking at the way we are treating myeloma, I was wondering if maybe in the future it will not be MDEX Velcade or Cybody plus DARA and, and plus an entire Fabril. So you will discuss with <laughs> Professor Malini. It's just, uh, uh, of course, he mentioned already this has a cost, uh, but that's, that's, that's another issue. I mean, so, uh, so definitely, and I will end my talk also with this, I think these this monoclonal antibodies have really changed completely the landscape, not only of AL amyloidosis, but also uh, on myeloma. So uh, if you have one question on, my, on AL <laughs> amyloidosis, I, I, can, I will answer. And then I'm moving to, um, to myeloma. Um, any question? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, you had a slide about the uh, pronto endpoint definition. Do you have a slide for the vital? I, I was not in, sorry. You show it in the end point, whereas we said, I mean, hospitalization and mortality for the vital. Can you show it again for one moment? Yeah. No. <laughs> Which one? Vital. The vital, you see, time to composite or cause mortality or cardiac hospitalization. So, moving to myeloma. 
new trials. So, you know, I, gonna, <laughs> I had to make choices, right? <laughs> because, uh, so, uh, I'll start with this one, you know? This one is about ixazomib. If you go to clinicaltrials.gov, you know, you almost have 90 trials, including AL amyloidosis, uh, with the ixazomib. I'm just showing you this slide. Um, to, to show you that uh, ixazomib is tested, uh, is trialed uh, at e every stage of, uh, uh, of myeloma. But this is only a real small number uh, among the 90 studies uh, that are ongoing. So, um, you know, it's called tourmaline, you, you, you're probably familiar with this. So I decided that I will have to make a choice. I will not uh, go through carfilzomib and then even pomalidomide and uh, all these <laughs> exciting new drugs. So I, I will focus only on immunotherapy. Why will I focus on immunotherapy? Because it's extremely exciting. We, 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 we believe it's a completely changing field. Um, I will tell you a, a, a small a short story. 20 years ago, I, try, I did um, uh, dendritic cells, and I loaded the dendritic cells with the, the immunoglobulins, and I tried to induce um, 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 T cells, uh, T cells directing against the plasmocytes. So I completely failed. I mean, not, not completely. I published the results, the negative results, and I stated all the reasons why it failed. But at that time, for example, we had never heard of checkpoints in, uh, you know, um, that we know are so important. Uh, but um, some years later, uh, uh, that, uh, my, my wife had told me that actually she had been very impressed the, by the way I was talking about dendritic cells, and uh, that's, that's, uh, that's part of my success. <laughs> and so I, I, I did not completely fail in, in, in uh, trying uh, uh, the immunotherapy in myeloma. But for many years, people never be, did not believe in, uh, in, uh, in immunotherapy. And actually now it's, it's different. You see this slide is, oh, is really nice. It explains the different, the major uh, ways to target, you know, the plasmocytes, uh, the abnormal plasmocytes, either by a monoclonal antibody or by CAR T cells. So you take the T cells of the patient and you, with the brand new technology, you uh, put at the surface very specific uh, receptors that will target the, 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 the cancer antigen on the, on the plasmocytes. So this is extremely exciting. And you have also the checkpoint inhibitors, and I will come back on that. You know that uh, the immune system is ready to uh, get rid of the cancer, but cannot act properly act because there are uh, inhibitors, so we inhibit the inhibitors. This is the so-called checkpoint inhibitors, and then we release the break, and it, it, it works, actually. It, uh, as you know, it works very efficiently in many uh, solid tumors, and it does work to, to some extent also uh, in hematology and specifically in myeloma. And I will not go too much on the, this, this uh, other uh, pathway. So uh, let's focus first on monoclonal antibodies again. Um, so we are, uh, we have uh, in myeloma, especially the um, two targets, uh, SLAM7 or CS1 and the uh, CD38 that we already uh, mentioned. And uh, looking at CD38, we have three antibodies, DARA that are already mentioned, uh, SAR, Izatuximab, developed by Sanofi, and, and a third one uh, uh, at, at a most, uh, more, much earlier uh, development. But you could see that we have many other uh, targets uh, uh, in development, only monoclonal uh, on antibodies. And the very first one I should mention is elotuzumab. Elotuzumab was the first one to prove that a monoclonal antibody could be uh, efficient in myeloma. We had tried many antibodies, anti-IL-6, anti-CD20, and it did not work. 
Uh, well, this one was the first one, but I must say it does work in combination. It does not work by itself. And specifically, it needs to be combined with an emit. It's, it's, it, it works best with an emit. An emit. Uh, so um, so we, we, we should recognize that this, this is the very first active monoclonal antibody in myeloma. But the, the, uh, just right after arrived daratumumab. And daratumumab, you know, not only uh, is it very effective, also by itself because I mentioned to you that uh, it, it does act like all uh, monoclonal antibodies, but also it regulates the immune system of the patient and it boosts the immune system. That actually, that's the way we understand why it does work as a monotherapy. So uh, I'm emphasizing actually daratumumab because it's difficult uh, for halotuzumab to develop while uh, daratumumab is, uh, I must say, more efficient. And you can see that it is, uh, it, ha it, is it has been trialed uh, everywhere. Of course, you're very familiar, I'm sure. And I'm not mentioning it in the relapse setting. Extremely encouraging results, especially the Pollux trial, Revlimidex plus Daratumumab with an expected PFS in the relapse expected. I mean, not rich yet, but expected of around maybe 40 months. I mean, that's what I heard. Uh, not too long ago, while uh, so far the best relapse treatment was the combination of carfilzomib, brevlimid dex with a median PFS of 28 months, right? So you see the, the jump, uh, if I may say. So uh, extremely encouraging in the relapse setting. The Cassiopeia, I will mention that, and we have just finished enrollment, more than a thousand patients, a joint study with the OVEN uh, and the IFM. And, uh, and I will come back on that, but also, so that's in the, fr um, in the, in the first, uh, in the front light setting, in the transplant eligible, transplant ineligible, Maya study. Um, so definitely daratumumab will, will make uh, a paradigm shift uh, uh, in the treatment of, uh, of myeloma. And uh, I will mention also is atuximab, so it's, a, it's, it's, its development is not as developed as it is with daratumumab, but uh, you can see you have uh, uh, many uh, different studies, mostly in the relapse setting, but also for smoldering myeloma. And, um, um, and uh, in, in France, I mean, this, this uh, trial will uh, start and we will... Uh, um, uh, enroll patients in, in the so-called ICARIA uh, trial, so that's in the relapse setting. It's POMDEX plus or minus Isatuximab. So this, this is just just uh, beginning and the IFM uh, uh, will be part of this uh, important uh, study. So first, the monoclonal antibodies. Second, the checkpoint inhibitors that I mentioned and I'm sure you're familiar with. This is the uh, schema showing the tumor, the myeloma uh, abnormal uh, myeloma cells, and, uh, and um, expressing uh, PDL1 and inhibiting actually the active immune system of the patient. So the patient uh, cannot uh, get rid of uh, the myeloma cells, and we do have now uh, checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, um, so. Uh, interacting between PDL1 and PDL1, and it is, uh, as you know, uh, currently uh, uh, in development. Uh, mostly uh, uh, these two studies, Lendex plus or minus, uh, uh, I mean, it's not plus or minus, it's a phase two study, plus pembrolizumab and uh, Pondex plus, plus uh, pembrolizumab. So this is, uh, this is ongoing in terms of uh, checkpoint inhibitors in myeloma. Um, now I would like to turn to vaccines that I mentioned uh, and, and then to CAR T cells because CAR T cells um, uh, look very promising. So first vaccines. Um, so the idea is the, 
that you will, uh, so th this, this, uh, this treatment will only be uh, tested in the maintenance because uh, you, you don't expect to have a, a, a very strong immune response, so strong that you could uh, um, uh, treat an active myeloma. But in the maintenance uh, phase, it could be uh, successful. So you see, that's what I tried to do 20 years ago. Dendritic cells uh, fused with myeloma cells, and you, you hope that you will uh, boost the immune system and, uh, and get rid of the of the, um, of the um, myeloma. So either in the maintenance phase or in the, in the early phase of myeloma, so -called the, the so-called smoldering uh, uh, myeloma. So this is actually uh, currently tested and I know that Davidan in, in the US um, with the big um, um, transplant, uh, American transplant network is testing this vaccine uh, strategy in uh, uh, the maintenance. Uh, phase post autologous stem cell transplantation. But here you can see um, other uh, uh, different um, vaccine uh, uh, strategies. Monoclonal antibodies, uh, checkpoint inhibitors, vaccines, and I will, I will close this immune um, overview, immune therapy overview with the CAR T cells. So CAR T cells have been presented uh, by the Americans and uh, also by Chinese. They do a lot of uh, CAR T cells in China. And um, I was at the ASCO meeting in Chicago a uh, month ago or two months ago. And uh, there was an oral presentation by a Chinese team and extremely uh, impressive, really with limited toxicity, no cytokine release syndrome, you know this is a major issue with, with that type of technology, no uh, neuropathy of the central nervous system, and, and highly efficient. So efficient that you wonder if it's really true, but uh, it, it, that was presented in a major uh, congress, and um, um, of course, it's, very, it's, it's still very difficult. The technology is, is huge, you know, very, a very limited number of centers can actually produce CAR T cells. In France, we are testing uh, in one center. I don't know about in Italy. Do you have any, anyone doing CAR T cells? Well, I think that they are exploring in, um, in Torino, in Milan also, Corradini. And uh, we are also trying it in Pavia because it's ideal in amylidosis mean, because you have such a small clone. But we are concerned about the side effects. So, but it's still uh, at a very early stage. But um, you, you remember the very first paper was published in one case uh, with a CD19 uh, target, you know. And, uh, and that, uh, that was shown, um, that you, you could see, you see the monoclonal um, uh, peak uh, decreasing to zero. And um, that was a very, the very first uh, reported case. And uh, you could see the, the disappearance of the plasmocytes after this uh, treatment. And, and now, now the, the, so you have, the, it's very important also to choose the target. So now we're moving from CD19 because it was probably not the best target to BCMA, and BCMA are uh, currently the best target uh, in the field of uh, CAR T cells in, in myeloma. So that, that's what I was mentioning uh, with the Chinese team. Actually, it was a CAR T cells directed to uh, BCMA. So. These, these are different uh, trials ongoing uh, with uh, cell therapy, immune cell therapy uh, in myeloma. And these are the results, uh, you see, um, with that, that's the American team. Uh, uh, but I must say that the Chinese, was, uh, it was even more uh, impressive. I would, I would like also to mention that uh, you have um, uh, by what we call the bispecific antibodies and specifically the bites. And then, so one, one, one side targets the, the tumor and